uh, lions and birds of prey. Now, birds of prey are incredibly cunning. What they're going to do is they're going to fly with the sun behind them. The glare of the sun will stop animals from seeing them coming, and they will get a nice, easy meal. But Liam here has a special adaptation to help that out. If you take a look around his eyes, he's got those nice, dark circles. Liam wasn't out late last night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is his very own pair of built-in sunglasses. And this helps reduce the glare of the sun so Liam can spot any birds of prey. Now, I think he's done a really good job that the coast is clear, so it's safe for his little brother, Root to come out and forage for food. Now, food for a meerkat are things like bugs, grubs, crickets in this case, but they've also been known to take down the deadly venomous scorpion. Now, what they'll do is they'll grab hold of it, they'll bite off that stinger to make sure that they get stung, and then they'll eat it down. If you think that was impressive, meerkats have also been known to take down deadly venomous snakes. So it just so happens in my pocket, I have a deadly venomous rubber, calm down everybody, snake. So I'm going to toss it down on the ground and we're going to see what Liam does. He's going to grab it, he's going to chew it, and he's going to take it away into his burrow to eat with his brother Rue. That was Liam and Rue, everybody. <laughs> nice. Great. All right. So Your friend from America. I need to know if you guys have loud voices. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Be a loud voice. Great. All right, you're gonna need those in a second. You need to do me a favor and call out the name of our next animal. He is a bit shy, so that's why I need you guys to use those loud, loud voices. Now, he comes from South America, specifically the Brazilian rainforest, and as such, he has a typically Brazilian name. It's a little bit tricky to pronounce, so I'll say it first, and you do your best to repeat what I say. If you can't say it as well as I can, don't worry, it has plenty of practice. All right, so the count of three, the name I need you to shout out is... George. Everybody got that? Yeah? Alright, ready? One, two, three. George! Let's see if that was loud enough. Alright. Everybody is George. And George is a, a parrot. Does anybody know what kind of parrot? A macaw. Does anybody know what kind of macaw? Alright, George here is a green. Macaw. He's the second largest species of parrot after the hyacinth macaw, which you can see over by Butterfly Paradise. They're the loud blue ones. All right, so as I said, we're all about natural behaviors here at London Zoo. I'm going to send George up to that fat yellow bitch. He's going to turn himself around and look out below. Did he get anybody? You have to aim better next time, George. We talked about that. Alright. Now, George here only goes to the toilet about every 30 minutes. So you should all be okay. But just in case he flies over the tops of your heads, do not look up with your mouths open. You've all been walking. Alright, so this part of the demonstration, I need everybody in the audience area sat down. Sit, 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 sit. Everybody sat down. Yes, great. Alright, now you guys are going to need to use your imagination. Now, George being a four foot, sorry, having a four foot wingspan means he cannot fly through the trees of the Amazon rainforest where it comes. So, what he's going to do is he's going to fly just over the tops of them, just like that. Now, George here is going to fly through the trees of the Amazon rainforest where it comes. So, George has a couple of other adaptations to life in the trees. Does anybody think they know what they are? Shout him out. His two of them. His beak and his his feet. That's right. So if you take a look at George's feet first, you'll notice that he doesn't have your average pigeon or bird of prey feet, which has three toes pointing forwards and one toe pointing backwards. George here has two toes pointing forwards and two toes pointing backwards, and this is what we call zygodactyl feet. And this all not only helps him when he's climbing through the trees, but it also helps him when he's eating some of his favorite foods. Now, George doesn't have hands like us, so what George here is going to use is he's going to use his feet. He's going to pick it up and he's going to use it like hands. That way he can get in all sorts of food and nuts and seeds that he has. Now, George is incredibly, incredibly proud of his feet, and sometimes if asked him really nicely, he does like to show us. So, George, can you show us your foot, please? Look at that, everybody! All right. And his feet are 
are so strong, he can hang upside down by just one foot. Look at that. All right, give him a round of applause, everyone. Having the time of our lives at Animals in Action, we are in the Amazon rainforest. And this isn't a rope in the amphitheater, it is a vine. And you are going to see just how George uses both his feet and his beak to make his way through the trees. Now, as I said, George has a four foot wingspan, he's unable to fly through the trees. So, for short distances, what George is going to do is this he's going to use that beak as a third hand, and it's going to help him make his way across. The thing. His beak is made of keratin, which is the same stuff as your fingernails and hair, and it is incredibly, incredibly strong. And again, if I ask George really nicely, he does like to show off. George, how strong is your beak? Look at that, everybody. Pretty strong stuff. Now, you may wonder when George would use that in the wild. He would use that to climb up and down in the branches. Now, as I said, George has an incredibly, incredibly strong beak. So, what I'm gonna... And what it actually can do is physically remove a child's finger in one bite. So what I'm going to need from the audience is a brave volunteer who has spare fingers. Put your hands down, children. Crazy children, you don't have spare fingers. What's wrong with you? What have you been teaching your children? All right. So instead, we're going to use this hazelnut. You or I would need a set of nutcrackers to get into it, but George can get into it in just one bite. Look at that, everybody. He has about a ton of crushing pressure in that beak. So this nut is no problem. All right, hands up here, who thinks George is an amazing animal. All right, hands up, who here wants a George of their very own? All right, let me tell you a couple more things about George before you go out and get yourself a parrot. George here, as lovely as he is, can scream for up to eight hours a day. And it can be heard over half a mile away. They say because like George had the IQ of a three-year-old child and are equally as destructive. But George lives until he's a hundred years old. So just imagine, ladies and gentlemen, you have a three-year-old that screams for up to eight hours a day, is equally as destructive and noisy, and lives for a hundred years. Every parent's worst nightmare, don't deny it. All right, so there's some sad news, however, because rainforest species like George have declined due to deforestation. But we here at London Zoo are dedicated to protecting species from all corners of the globe. Whether they fly through the sky, swim through the oceans, run along the ground, burrow beneath oh, it. And all this is made possible by you guys coming to visit us here today. So, oh, I just want to say oh, to you guys, on behalf of myself, my colleagues, and of course the animals. Have an amazing day everybody. Take care. Bravo, vero? Bravo, vero?